find me a programmer. So somewhere there's an artist in our studio printing really bad right now because they're not going to like the quality of videos that I see, but that's okay. So overview, we're going to start with laying the foundation. We're going to go into the basics of the system, the goals, where we went. We're going to go brick by brick. Next couple of interviews, little, little things we went on. At this point, I'm regretting coming up with clever names for each of these subtitles. Not, not as clear as they could be, but you know what you're going to do. Stretch factor, we're going to discuss issues that came up along the development and problems that we continue to deal with. We're going to get major renovations, a big sweeping change that we made to try to address these problems. And then we're going to go into house cleaning, take a look at where we are right now and where things might be going in the future. All right, so let's start with the foundation. The, the big goal that we wanted to support the Fortnite building system right off the bat is that it had to be creative enough that players could build these crazy castles of their dreams and not be restricted. It had to have the depth and variety that they wanted so they could have their crazy stairs and their store and their, their balconies and their doorways. But at the same time, it had to be fast and robust enough to perform under combat and action scenarios. Players need to be able to defend themselves in a hurry. And so you can't spend a lot of time clunking around like, I want to put this creative thing. You need to also be able to respond in a real big hurry if these guys show up and start punching your base in the ground. So with that in mind, the very first thing we had to decide was what was the granularity of the pieces that we were going to give players to build with. Now obviously the larger granularity is you move more towards a bigger building. You increase construction speed. You can throw out a whole base really fast if I give you a giant big block like that. You know, it's like a whole little hut. And as you go in the other direction, you increase creative freedom. And so for us, we kind of picked a middle ground. We thought it would be a good balance. We broke it down into component parts of what we think of as a building, such as walls, or floors, or roofs, or stairs. For us, we feel that that is a good balance between the speed and creativity without moving too much in either direction. The user is selecting is being contextually chosen based on the viewing angle, angle of their camera. As they look down, they're being presented with options for where to build the floor. As they look straight ahead, they're being presented with options on how to build a wall. Within that, the user can scroll a mouse wheel and select sub variants of a piece. So, for instance, you saw as the wall was going by, they got a wall with like a little barricade window in the middle, a wall with double windows, a wall with doors. And then at this point, they decide, like, okay, I want this wall. They left, like, they place, they get a blueprint outline of kind of what they want to build. And at which point now, if they walk up and melee on it, it will begin building up and completing the construction in a contextual manner. Likewise, if the wall is already completed, a user can walk up and start mailing on it, and then it begins to destroy it. We've also got a little bit of a, you can see right there at the tail end, kind of a little building mini game going on with like a little meter going by, and you just click on it to try to speed up your building. At this point in development, it was actually not fully functional, but we polished it, got to take it along. If you're, a, if you're a fan of Gears of War, I like to call this applying all the lessons learned from Gears of War, add active reload to everything. And, uh, <laughs> but, and so we'll get into that a little bit later. But, as you can see, you know, initial prototype kind of moves out of the concept. We, we really like where it's going building-wise, but, you know, this is something that's kind of obvious. But yes, the user intention is hard. You're going to be like, well, done, Billy, I know. But we, we really thought that if we could just automate this to, we could choose your piece based on the floor or the, or the wall without you having to think about it, that it would be a great fit. But in, in retrospect, playing a playtest, people absolutely despised it because it wasn't long in playing that people would look down on the floor and they would want to be able to build a wall but a story could beneath them. They didn't want the floor. That was completely confusing to them. I was looking at a wall and now you're presenting me a floor. What is going on? We're happy to put in. We want to focus on that right now. Because we, we came up with the idea of what if we gave the user an explicit control on the quick bar that they could press a button and switch it over and then we whoops. Oh my goodness, spoilers. Then you would see the building pieces on your quick bar by explicitly going into the smoke. Because now, there's no more confusion over contextual, I look down and got a floor. You pick the floor yourself right off the quick bar. Now, as you can probably guess, there were, there were tons of problems with this too. Even with this uh, glorious program bar removed, when we put in real icons, it was definitely easier to pick what you wanted, but you still had to sit there and scan. Because when you get to the level of like, here's a wall, but it has a window over here and a door over here, that's still not very easy to convey even with like really nice made artist icons. They always have to sit there and like look through their quick bar, and it really wasn't very fast. Additional stairs that turn around, and roofs, and braces, and what if I get one of the castle barricades? They're like, oh, okay. Well, we don't have anything that can service that. And in fact, now these other pieces that people are inventing are causing other problems we didn't even have. For instance, it's pretty easy to put a wall in front of you, but this balcony now, how do you orient this in 3D space? It can be mirrored and rotated 
it all over the place. And it's really easy for a user to understand putting a wall in front of them, but now when they have to start doing greedy math rotations to make the balcony look good, they don't get very happy. And so now we're just running into all of these issues. And then they're like, wait, what if we have upgrades? What if we could convert between materials? Like, okay, we'll keep that in mind too. And so we're getting to this point where all these issues are accumulating, and we're coming up with gray box ideas on how to solve it. And this is an actual gray box of what the UI in this game might have looked like at one point. And we realized we're kind of making Excel, like we're building spreadsheets. This is very fun. Like we at the top, we had all of these different filters. Like, oh, I got to filter by the type. And then there were scrolling pages. And then on top of that, there were so many different variants that didn't matter. You could drag them in the quick bar. So like this, this just wasn't going to work. We were, we were in a bad way. Additionally, while all these ideas are going on, implementation is lagging behind. You can't keep up with all the suggestions for UI and all these variations you want. So as a quick aside, the trick that we learned is we needed a prototype. We tried it in PowerPoint. Now a lot of people, like, you know, obviously prototype UI is not a new thing. And maybe even doing a PowerPoint isn't that new of an idea either, but it was for us. We tried it out. And so UI and I worked together on like this radial mock-up of what it might look like if your piece was selected off the radio menu. All of this was done in PowerPoint, and all of it was done in under an hour. People don't really realize that PowerPoint has all these like really powerful features. You can jump around between slides and make click zones and all these things. So we were able to mock out like how ridiculously tedious this proposed UI was going to be just an upgraded wall. And we put it in front of people, and it took five seconds, and we're like, you're right, that is terrible. And the, the alternative would have been implementing that over a course of a week or two and wasting a lot of time to discover the same thing. So, if you ever need a prototype UI, you may want to consider PowerPoint. Uh, so, and renovations. So, numerous issues still out there. Still haven't solved everything. And we decided, well, let's just refocus on the core pieces. If there were no variants, if we only had the, the four base pieces that people wanted, the stairs, the roofs, the walls, the floors, and we put them on the quick bar, that was all you were allowed to do in our game. Would the game function finally? Yes. We're like, all right. So we will take those four and we'll try to build from there. How are we going to get back to the variants now? Could we, could we go back to that UI that we had and now like pre-filter it so we can get rid of that top part? No, that's, that's still time to sell. And so we're like, okay, let's just look at the core wall itself. What if we were able to change its granularity temporarily? What if we were able to break it into smaller pieces and alter it that way? We kept thinking like, okay, what if it's like an architect's grid? You look at the wall like this and you decide, hey, you know what? I'm going to punch this out and I'm going to punch this out and I'm going to confirm my selection and now there's a door here. Oh, all right, this actually might work. Does it work for the other variant pieces for walls? Well, all right, so we'll, put, we'll fill those back in. We'll click here. Now there's a window. Yes, we're liking this for walls. But in order for this to work, it's got to work for all those other pieces too that we have to solve. So we move on to floors. Does it translate to floors? Actually, it does. Floors can work pretty much the exact same way. You carve out this little piece, there's the balcony everybody loved. But the important thing is that we discovered almost on accident, I wish I could take credit for this. Now, if you pop that piece out, it's the same balcony, but it's oriented with 3D space for the user automatically. They didn't even think about it. And so, precise user automation is invaluable. This is the counter towards guessing what they wanted. Now we can do exactly what they want without them even thinking about it. And so for floors, now we're really psyched because this, this is working for floors too. So we move on to stairs and roofs, which are obviously the even more complex pieces. And looking at it, and we're trying to make it, the buildings build themselves. You put them down, and they start building up. The thing is, this wasn't a new idea. Like this has been proposed probably five or six times. And we always came up with a reason to shoot it down, and it was always something else. Like, how does that say the more buildings that build themselves? Come on. Right? Like, or then it was like, well, but it's a building game. If you're not building, how invested are you? Right? And so, you know, we got all those kind of things. We just got shooting it down over and over. And we were like, you know what, forget it. We're just going to try it. We're going to see what happens. And we tried it and we loved it. It, like, just, it just solved the melee issue right away. But the thing that was important, too, is to get there, we also had to remove that baby. And as much as we like active reload that works apart, we had to get it out of there and make progress. And that was actually a big step, too. So the, the two big things on this was really important to revisit this part of idea. Like, we, we had discarded all the buildings so many times, it's not even funny. And the answer was right there in front of our face when we finally tried it. And the minigame at the time was probably one of the most polished aspects of the entire game. But we had to throw it away and make progress. Then we decided to do contextual operations.